Hello, this is Dr. Roderick L. Roll. Now that you have collected your corn data and you have analyzed your corn data to see how uh, similar it was to the uh, class average, now you're going to use uh, a statistical tool to see if it is really um, accurate or not. So I would like for you to read through this um, statistical procedure that I have and it talks about um, a deck of cards and how the probability of drawing an ace of spades from a 52 card deck is 1.92 percent so that is your chance of receiving that ace of spades and then if you play 100 consecutive games and your opponent always draws the ace of spades does that mean they're cheating so you utilizing that concept you can think back to the counting of the purple corn kernels versus uh, the yellow kernels um, should you get 75 percent of them purple versus 25 percent yellow and if not does something did something happen so that's what this uh, statistical procedure is about so read through this the portion that is really uh, should help you out starts here so let's look at it. statistical analysis can be performed on the collected data of all three activities this analysis is called a chi-square so this is st statistics and it is used to test relationships between categories um, such as the collected data versus your expected data this statistical procedure can determine how well the observed ratios fit the expected ratio. The difference between the number observed and the number expected for a phenotype is squared and then divided and in this um, chart here in this table it shows you how to do it exactly and again what we're trying to get is this number here called the chi-square but before you calculate the chi-square you must first create a null hypothesis our null hypothesis states there is no significant difference between the observed and the expected number so if you got uh, you know 2,892 and the expected was this does that mean uh, it is really different or is, is that just chance so that's what the null hypothesis is going to state. So if the null hypothesis is correct, then the observed variation is due to chance. Now if you reject the null hypothesis, you have to take the alternative hypothesis, which is something besides chance took place. This could be uh, one gene silencing another gene, epistasis, or it could mean a mutation of some sort occurred. So how do you determine uh, if you should accept or reject your hypothesis? You're going to have to calculate chi-square and you're going to have to use this statistical table that should be in your lecture book but I have provided it here um, in this chart below. So in your lecture book in the appendix you should be able to find, be able to find the chi-square chart. So in this table, note the column titled degrees of freedom. To the far left, that is your column. The degrees of freedom is always one less than the number of different possible phenotypes. So in corn, we looked at yellow versus purple. So that is two phenotypes. So we would say two minus one will give us one degree of freedom. Therefore, we use the row on the table to interpret our data. So I put a star by row one, and that's the row we would use. So the numbers under probability, so over to the right, there's a different column that has uh, several different uh, columns within it. So that is the probability portion. So the percentage 
given at the top of each probability column represents the probability that the variation is due to chance. If the probability value is greater than 5%, which means it falls to the left of that 0 0.05, if your value that you receive falls to the left of 0 0.05, then we will accept the null hypothesis that the variation that you observed is due to chance. However, if it is to the right of 5%, if it falls to the right of 5%, then you would reject the null hypothesis. If you reject the null hypothesis, you have to accept the alternative hypothesis that something besides chance occurred. Um, in the game of space, it means someone cheated. In the game of us counting these purple versus yellow, that means something happened like epistasis or some type of mutation. So then after that, we'll look at um, how to actually use these numbers. So I created a fictitious uh, example here. So in my F2 population, uh, I counted uh, 826 kernels. And out of the 826, 638 were purple and 190 were yellow. Now you cannot use these numbers. You will use your numbers from uh, the data that you've collected. So the expected count should be 619. Now you, you should know how to do that from the previous. You just say, well, if it's a, uh, a homozygous, I mean a heterozygous uh, individual cross with heterozygous, you should get a 3 to 1 ratio. Once you have the total number of 826 kernels, you just uh, say 75% times that, and it gives you this 619, and then you do 25% uh, times uh, 826, and it gives you the number of 206. And then there, <coughs> then you would put that into your um, expected column. So you, you collect the data, you put it in this uh, table here, and then you just follow instructions. You look at the observed count minus the expected count. And that gives you this 16.5. Then you do the other one for the yellow and you get negative 16.5. Then you look at the next column. Uh, you do the observed minus the expected and you square it and you get a number of 272.25. Go to the next column. Uh, you know how to do that. Take that number and divide it by uh, the expected number of 619. Now I have exactly how to do that right up under the table. It's right here. And in the end, I received the number of 1.757868. That is your chi-square value. Now you have to go down and plug that into your table. So looking at the chi-square table, for one degree of freedom in that column, I'm going to move over and look for that number of chi-square, 1.75. It's over here around um, 0 0.20 or 20%. So the probability that we receive from that example is greater than 5% but less than 20%. So if the value is greater than 5%, we accept our no hypothesis that the variation that we observed is due to chance and chance alone. If, I mean, it is always possible that additional data could cause us to reject the hypothesis, our no hypothesis. If it is rejected, then the alternative hypothesis is used, meaning something beside chance occurred, such as epistasis or a mutation. Now using the formula for chi-square and the values in this table, I want you to do the same thing for your three examples. So this would be uh, what you would turn in for your assignment. Um, if I uh, gave you this assignment on the statistics of the corn, you would look at corn A, put the degrees of freedom here and your chi-square and then you would explain it here and you would do corn B and corn C. 
So this will be in uh, the top hat for you to look over. 